So, uh, man, my car car culture is huge. That's what brought me into racing. You know, I first you know started off with my Dodge Challenger, bought it in 2010. You know, one mod after another, supercharger, cam, this, that. Eventually built it, made 900 plus horsepower. That was my first initial start in really buying street cars, building them, and doing some cool, fun stuff with them. I just drag raced at half mile events and did mile events with it. But then after that, I wanted to go fast around corners, so I bought my C6 Z06. Slowly started modifying it through an APR wing on it. Did my heads on it so I wouldn't drop a valve because at that time LS7s had an issue dropping valves and I didn't want to be one of those guys. <laughs> so I fixed that. Did like, some aero stuff, tires, um, brakes, you know, you name it. And just kept on road coursing the crap of that car and it was my daily. So like I couldn't break the car. Like, I was living in Monterey, California. So I would drive down to SoCal, go to like Willow Springs and Button Willow, all that stuff. I'd go to Auto Club Speedway to the track there. You know, that was 12 hour round trip when it's all said and done. So every other weekend making these 10 to 12 hour round trips just to go track my car, can't break it and then drive back and be ready to go back to work on Monday morning. Like I was doing that all these weekends, just trying to get better and better. The years go by, I start getting into NASCAR stuff. Once I got into racing, real racing, I stopped doing the track day stuff because it was, I didn't have any more time or the extra money. Getting into about 2019 or so, I started having a little bit more time because I was racing higher levels of NASCAR, but I wasn't racing as many races anymore. So I had a lot more free weekends. So I was like, let me get back to this whole street car world. So I still have my C6 Z06. And at that point it was like 180, thousand miles on it, 190. I had so many miles. I did a cool rap on it and I started just taking it to car shows. And then uh, one day I saw Daigo Sato, he's from Japan, and he had this super sick C6 drift car. And I was like, that's the coolest Corvette drift car I've ever seen. And I was like, what if I turn my car into a drift car? So then I started looking up drift, cause I was always into drifting. I always thought it was cool, but I just never did it. So I started looking into drifting. I was like, oh, I can get an angle kit and hydraulic e-brake, you know, a couple of little things, suspension mods, and then boom, I can go drifting with it. And then I did all those mods. It didn't cost me too much to do it. And then I went to my friend's drift school in Texas. It's called the Texas Drift Academy. And uh, my friend Josh Robinson from Australia, who ran Formula Drift as well, um, he puts on the school. I spent three days with him. He taught me how to drift. And then the rest of the time, I was on my simulator, training on my simulator how to drift every single day and learn how to do it. And then in 2020, started drifting my C6 Z06. At that time, I was like one of the only few people who had a C6 Z06 who was drifting. Corvettes were still kind of fairly new to the drift world. Now there's a lot more drifting out there. And I was doing that and having fun. And then with my businesses that I had, I started making more money and I had sponsorship that took care of the racing, but my business money, I could, you know, had some money to spend on my car stuff. Half my businesses had to do with cars, right? So like it all made sense, it worked. So ended up buying an R32 GTR because I, I always loved GTRs, thought they were cool. I could get that Skyline at the time because that's what I could afford. I couldn't afford like a R34 GTR at the time or even an R35. Bought that and I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then I made this goal with one of my friends, Jay. Me and him made this goal because he had an R35 GTR at the time. We said, hey, one of these years we're going to make enough money so we can go to Japan and buy an R34 GTR and experience the GTR out there in Japan. And we like made this pack. We're like, we're going to do this. And I was like, how am I going to make that kind of money to do it? Because those cars are getting expensive. Fast forward towards the end of 2020, I actually bought a C7 Z06 as well. And that was an amazing car. One of my dream cars too at the time. Then 2022 is when I was like getting like kind of just really leaning towards this R34 GTR a lot more. And one day Jay hits me up and he's like, hey, I think I'm going to get an R34 GTR. I'm like, no, you're not, dude. Like these things are way too expensive. I know we told each other we're going to buy one in Japan, but the price is like, way more than what we originally thought they were gonna be. He's like, dude, I think I'm gonna do this. I'm like, what the F, you know? And all of a sudden, like two weeks later, he calls me, dude, I bought an R34 GTR. I'm like, oh my God, now I gotta buy one. Like, I'm not even ready to buy one right now, but I need to buy one. Thank God, over the last couple of years, I had made some decent money and had a surplus. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna buy an R34. And um, I didn't go through the route he did. I actually went through Space Auto in Japan. So they're a dealership out in Japan. I know there's other importers here in the US, some good ones too as well, reputable ones. But I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to literally go through Japan. Like I didn't want to go through anyone, no Americans at all. I wanted to go through Japan. There's only one person there who speaks English. And I found that guy <laughs> and I talked to him. I'm like, hey, I want to buy a car here. We spoke through emails, sent me a lot of pictures, information, sent me, I mean, really amazing customer service at, at Space Auto. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buy this car. Figured out the details. It actually cost a lot less than some of the other GTRs that I've seen online. I mean, everything else was costing 20, 30, 40 grand more. This car was as clean as you could possibly be. 
about 48,000 kilometers, which is about 30,000 miles. I mean, low mileage and bone stock never molested, like clean as can be. So I was like, and it's cost what? I was like, it literally was 30 grand less than other cars that had more mileage. So I was like, okay, I gotta get this car. I was like, I'm not gonna ever find this deal again. Wired the money, got the car, and I called Jay. I'm like, Jay, I bought, I bought one too. He's like, oh my God, what color? The exact same color you bought. Sonic Silver, you know, 1999 Sonic Silver. Our cars are identical looking. And then a few months later, we decided to fly to Japan and experience the car. We went to like, mines. Uh, I had mines install uh, titanium exhaust on my car. So the cool experience for me because my favorite car in Gran Turismo back in the day was like the Mines R34 GTR. So to go to their shop and have them work on my R34 GTR, I was like, in heaven. Went to Top Secret, met Smokey Nagata, he was there. Took a picture with him. I went to all these other famous shops, uh, Nismo, Amori, Factory. Went all over the place, experienced all of Tokyo. Went to Daikoku, the cool car meets. I did all that stuff, both of us together in Japan. And it was just a super cool experience. And after that, I was like, I need to go like every few months. So then I went to Tokyo Auto Salon next. And then I went again in May. I've been like three times now. I actually got a fourth trip coming up here pretty soon. So yeah, it's been really cool. And Space Auto has been super awesome, like connecting me with all these dots. Like I literally go through them for everything. I'm like, hey, tell me about this. Tell me about that. And they connect me with everything. They're absolutely amazing. I cannot praise them enough. Amazing service. And one thing I learned about the Japanese is they're just super honorable people, super respectful people. They want to help see th things through all the time. And that's what I love about their culture. And their food is amazing too. <laughs> I'm obviously a huge Corvette guy, right? A huge Chevy guy. So um, I have a C6 Z06, which is now a drift car. My C7 Z06 drag car and cruiser. It's currently being rebuilt right now. Had a major issue with it. Fire happened, fixing it right now. But I recently got a C8 Z06. I was one of the first to get one, then number 34. And I got the 34 because uh, my partnership with Chevy and because my team is number 34, they're like, we'll give you number 34. I'm like, cool. <laughs> Picked it up in December of uh, 2022 um, and immediately made a road trip across country. So I bought it in North Carolina drove to Texas, stopped there, and then went to California. My family's in Texas. So I immediately put like 3,000 miles on the car within like the first few weeks of having it. Absolutely loved the car. Went and took it to the quarter mile, eighth mile, ran 10-4 ran in a quarter mile, bone stock, just drag radials only. Went to Willow Springs and a couple other tracks. Been having fun on the road courses. And just been enjoying the car. I'm making a lot of YouTube content with this, so it's on my channel. Every week I have come out with some new video about the C8 Z06 and a few drift videos with my C6 Z06. Maybe I'll get the E-Ray too, we'll find out. For sure, by next, for sure, I'm gonna get the C8 ZR1, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm definitely gonna do that, but um, I'm actually thinking about this E-Ray too, so I've been thinking about it the last few days. <laughs> But yeah, no, the, the C8 Z06, absolutely amazing car. I mean, the 5.5 liter flat plane crank motor, 8,600 RPM, 670 horsepower. It's just incredible. The car sounds so good, even at lower RPMs cruising on the street. It's like the first car I've ever owned that I don't have to floor it for it to sound good. Like just cruising part throttle, it's just like, how did they make this amazing sound come out of this smallest V8 they've really done for a Corvette? You know, it's just, Absolutely incredible, but I love the car. It's good, it's comfortable, and it's easy daily. I got 14,000 miles on it now in just like eight months. So I'm trying to like slow down on like doing that. I don't, I don't, I don't really buy cars for the resale value. I buy them because I love them and I want to drive them forever. I'm just like, I feel like I put way too many miles too quick. So I'm like, I gotta slow down, put more miles on some other cars, a Tahoe instead. <laughs> Hey, I'm Ed Bolian from Vinwicky, and recently I accidentally bought another manual transmission LP640 on cars and bids. Unfortunately, I was bidding with money that I did not immediately or very easily have. And so my first call was to Premier Financial Services. The simple lease from Premier Financial Services is the most powerful tool in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits of a traditional loan, like the ability to accumulate equity, pay it off at any time, and see exactly where you stand with an amortization table, but also all the great things about a lease, the tax treatment, the low payments, and things like that. So check out Premier Financial Services at the link in the description below to thank them for their support of Vinwiki and to find out just how easy it can be to afford your dream car with Premier or another one if, if that happens to you.